This is Nancy Norman with Weekly Wisdom. Well, today we begin a new series. This series is based on the little book called The Game of Life and How to Play It, written by Florence Scovel Shin. This wonderful little book has changed the lives of millions. It's found its way into people's lives, and from the moment that people read it, their lives are changed. The Game of Life and How to Play It has also influenced many, many well-known authors. Norman Vincent Peale, Louise Hay, Catherine Ponder is to just name a few. Mrs. Shin was an artist, quite a well-known artist, and she also was a book illustrator. She illustrated children's books and children's magazines. Somewhere around midlife, she began to study in depth the spiritual aspects of life. And eventually, she became quite well known on her own. She was an early spiritual teacher, a metaphysician. She lectured. She was an author. She saw clients on a private basis. Now, when Florence Scovel Shin wrote this book, The Game of Life and How to Play It, she couldn't find a publisher to publish it. Not a one wanted anything to do with it. So she self-published. I think that probably was, was a bit of a, she stepped out on the edge with that one. The year was 1925. I don't imagine there were a lot of, of, of um, spiritual women teachers and ones who would step out and publish a work on their own. So she published this in 1925 and it became an instant success and has been a success ever since. Now, what is appealing about this book, The Game of Life and How to Play It, is that Florence Scovel Shin was able to put universal spiritual truths in a natural, no-nonsense, practical way so that all of us could understand what the universal laws are and how they affect our lives. So the game of life. We're going to start it today. So on with the game. In the very first paragraph, and in fact, the very first sentence, Florence Scovel Shin writes this. Most people consider life a battle, but it is not a battle. It's a game. It is a game, however, which cannot be played successfully without the knowledge of successful law, of spiritual law. And the Old Testament and the New Testaments give the rules of the game with wonderful clearness. Jesus Christ taught that it was a great game of giving and receiving. She goes on to say, this means that whatever man sends out, in word or deed, will return to him. What he gives, he will receive. If he gives hate, he will receive hate. If he gives love, he will receive love. If he gives criticism, he will receive criticism. If he lies, he will be lied to. If he cheats, he will be cheated upon. So the Bible tells us that whatsoever a man sows, that he also shall reap. I want you to think about that. What we're talking about here, what a man sows, what a man plants, he shall reap. Now let's just take the idea of planting a little seed. Let's say a carrot seed. We plant that little carrot seed and within a very short period of time, all of a sudden, there's a carrot. There's a beautiful, magnificent, orangey, delicious carrot. If we plant a little seed that is a tomato seed, in a short period of time, what do we have? We have tomatoes. This little seed has within it every single thing that it needs to become a full blossomed fruit or vegetable. We know that when we plant a seed, 
we know if it's a cabbage seed, it's going to come up a cabbage. If it's a tomato seed, it's going to come up a tomato. If it's a carrot seed that we plant, it's going to be a carrot. So if we plant a watermelon seed, we're not going to get a cabbage. We're not going to get a carrot. We're not going to get a cabbage. We have planted a, a watermelon seed. Therefore, we're going to get a watermelon. What a man sows, he shall reap. What we plant will become manifest. What we, what we give or what we plant will be returned to us multiplied. Multiplied. Now, in the book, The Game of Life and How to Play It, I just want to share with you what our wonderful Florence Scoble Shin says. She said, so you see, to play successfully the game of life, we must train the imaging faculty. A person with an imaging faculty trained to image only good brings into his life every righteous desire of his heart. A person with an imaging faculty trained, trained to image only good brings into his life every righteous desire of his heart. Health, wealth, love, friends, perfect self-expression, his highest ideals. So basically, what we're going to be doing in the next week, weeks, is to train or retrain our minds. We're going to retrain our minds. We are going to be planting seeds of joy and success and prosperity and happiness. Gone are the times and we're going to dwell on, on fear and misery and criticism. So this week, I want you to begin to be aware of what you are planting, the thoughts you're holding in mind. What dominant thoughts are you holding in mind? Are they thoughts of goodness? Are they thoughts of, of joy, of wonder for you and for others? What, are, what thoughts are you holding in mind? So be aware of the dominant thoughts that you are holding in mind. The next thing, now this is all homework. The next thing I want you to be aware of is what words are you speaking? What words are you speaking? Again, are they words of encouragement, of health, of wealth, of prosperity, of love, of goodness, of joy for yourself and for everyone else? Or are they... Thought, words of criticism, cynicism, sarcasm. What words are you speaking? That's important. The thoughts and the words. This week, I want you to be very aware of what your dominant thoughts are and the words you speak because we are creating our lives by the thoughts we hold in mind and the words that we speak. The object of this game the object of this game is to see clearly the good. And when we do, we will become, it will become manifest in our lives. The game of life and how to play it. This is just week one. Join me next week. God bless you and have a fabulous week.